Hello, in this video you and I are going to repair this unserviceable turbo. All we need to do this is a new core or cartridge. These are very easy to find online and they're nice and cheap. Before we crack on and fix this, let's just think for a moment how it might have failed. There are a few different ways that these can fail. First of all, dirty oil. So dirty oil or a blocked oil supply pipe to the turbo can cause them to fail because of lack of lubrication, overheating, blah blah blah. That's one reason. Another reason can be this wastegate actuator. This has a spring inside it and a diaphragm and if either of those fails then it can cease working. And it's this that controls the boost from the turbo so if this fails the turbo can overspeed and destroy itself. Here's what's left of our turbo. So that's another thing that we've got to check for. Fortunately, there's a very simple way to check if your wastegate actuator is okay or not. The spring pressure, you can feel it by pushing on the rod. That's all good. And then for the diaphragm, without taking this apart, all we've got to do is this. And this is how it's decided it's not. Okay, I have the phone on there. Uh, I have the phone on there, alright. There you go. As you can see, if your tongue looks like this, then the diaphragm's good. So that was uh, maintaining the vacuum there, there's no problem with that diaphragm. So we can just take this apart now and change the core. Okay then, before we start taking this apart, we're gonna make sure that we don't misalign things upon reassembly. So, first of all, there's a notch on here, which lines up with a notch on the core, which you can see there. So that's good. We know that we can't really misalign that. This side does have a little notch around the back under here, so presumably there'll be the same one there, but because I can't see that until I take it apart, I'm not gonna risk it. And I have prepared a little mark here using a file. So I've got a witness mark which runs across from there to here, and I know that this is the way they need to go back together. I did have to go quite deep with that because as you'll see later in this video, I am fanatical about cleanliness. If this isn't as clean as a whistle when we're finished, I will not be a happy chappy. Okay, we're gonna remove the wastegate actuator. So to do that, we're just gonna remove this clip here first, like so. And I'm gonna put that right over there. And then we'll just pull this off once we've got the bolts undone. We've then got two bolts to remove, 12 mil in this case, which might be a little bit on the tight side. Karate. Voila. On some turbos you will find a V-band clamp here to remove. That's very easy, as you can see here. But in our case, we have two retaining plates with 10 mil bolts. And again, they might be quite tight. I've tried them with an open-ended spanner and I could feel that they were extremely tight, so I have a ring spanner now, 10 mil. I've got three of the four bolts out on the other side. The last one's been a little bugger, but I'll have to show that who's boss in a while. And to give me a little bit more access, I'm gonna remove this now. So this circlet needs to be compressed together with a tool like 
this. This is supposed to be made in Germany, so they shouldn't be made out of Swiss cheese. But these days, you just never know, do you? They don't make tools like they used to. Let's see if this holds up and the tips don't snap off while I'm trying to do this job. And I sprayed the circlip with WD-40 a while ago. So that's been sitting there soaking. I have started to remove some clothing. That's not because I'm trying to be sexy. I know I am, but I'm not trying to be. But it's because I'm flipping dripping. It's boiling here today. I don't even have a vice in this garage. That's how pants it is. So if I can do this without a vice, then anybody can do it. Okay, that's coming. So what I need to do is just get that started like it was there. And then with my third hand, I just need to get a little flat blade screwdriver and help it out as it comes. I had a feeling that was going to happen. The flipping tip snapped off, didn't it? Oh. Just made a quick 30 second modification with a grinder, angle grinder. So hopefully this tool will do what I want it to now. Right, that's what we want. Got a flat blade screwdriver under there. And now we just need to kind of unzip it. Daddy, my zipper's stuck. Get in the car, Junior. <laughs> Blows. A bit of gentle persuasion with a rubber mallet to get this off now. Here's what's left of our turbo. Okay, we're on this last screw now. The clearance is awful. I could take an angle grinder to this and just cut this uh, kind of flange off to give me more access, but I'm not really too fussed. I'm just going to use an old Indian trick of um, a chisel and hammer. There we go. Right, that just gets it started. It's not pretty, but it doesn't matter, it gets the job done. And there we go. This is now loose, we can remove this. And that is everything dismantled. There you go, you can see that the shaft on that's all bent and there's play, kind of axial play and longitudinal play. You can also see damage to the blades there. This blade is damaged here as well. The blades have been in contact with areas that they shouldn't have. So that was causing the police car sound that we had in our car. I'm going to clean all these parts up now, have a good look and kind of inspect everything before I put everything back together. Everything looks absolutely fine. So this is now almost ready to go back together. Um, I did say I was obsessed with cleanliness. I don't want the engine to look nice, I want it to run well, that's all I'm bothered about. So I'm just going to prepare to fit the new core. There's a high temperature O-ring which goes on here like so. Then I'm going to put the circlip on. This has, if you look at it kind of sideways on, there's a square edge and a very slightly chamfered edge, like a rounded edge. And that rounded edge needs to point outwards so it helps you to kind of get it off when you need to in future. So I'll put that now on the core. There's no O-ring or anything on this side, it's just a very, there's a very fine tolerance on this edge here and the edge, the machined edge on there. So I now need to position this as it was before. Now putting the retaining plate back on here, this is the one with the damaged bolt. But as long as I can torque that up, I'm not too bothered. And when I say torque, I just mean get plenty of torque on it, I'm not going to be using a torque wrench or anything. That's that engaged, just wind it down by hand, finger tight, and the other side. You can't really go wrong with this, it says it up on it, and the distances between the holes are different between that one and that one, so they can only really go on one way. As long as you've got that up facing upwards, then you're good. Okay, there we go. Cleaned up the mating surfaces there and now putting this back on in line there with the notch on the new core. I'm 
I'm trying a slightly different approach here. I've got the circlip in position, kind of contracted, and then it's just been pushed into place. It's not fully home yet, but uh, I think it's easier to just deal with that and push it in while I'm pushing down on the top here, rather than try and do about five things at once. So let's give this a bash and see how it goes. So that's gone in on one side, just got to get the other side down now. Easy peasy, right that's gone in and now I need to expand it out. Okay, that's all good now, and I know it's good because the circumference is even. All the way around, we've got the same amount of circlip showing, so that's on well, and now I just need to refit the wastegate actuator. They're going into alloy, so I'm not gonna to be too crazy with them. I don't wanna strip any threads. And now I just need to put this clip back on. Okay, done. This is now ready to go back on the car. There we go then, we've got a beautiful, smooth running, good as new turbo. And it only cost us a couple of hours. These kits are really cheap. Check out the prices in the link below in the description. And we've just saved ourselves a ton of money. I know it looks like I've just been to war, but that's because our garage is about 40 million degrees C. And if you know your way around a toolkit, you'll find this an easy job. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more helpful videos on random subjects, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, don't forget, love life.